solve for x in R. A. The floor of 2x minus 3 is equal to 5. B. The absolute value of x minus 5 is equal to the absolute value of 3 minus 2x. So let's do part A. The floor of 2x minus 3 is equal to 5. Well, I've called this the floor function. Some people call this uh, the greatest integer function. Uh, because what it means is that whatever number is in here, whatever this number is, we round it down to the nearest integer below. If it was minus um, 6.7, we would go all the way down to minus 7. If it was 4.2, we would go down to 4. But in this case, we round it down to 5. So it must be somewhere between 5 and 6. Whatever this number is, must be between 5 and 6. Now let's see. It could be equal to 5 because when you round 5 down to the nearest integer it's 5. It can't be equal to 6 because if it was equal to 6 it would round down to give 6. And so um, we've turned our first line into a set of inequalities. And we can just solve these inequalities. So, we would like to get x on its own. So first, we'll get rid of this minus 3, which we'll do by adding minus 3 um, to... Hmm, there's three of them. I wonder what we do. Well, let's just have a look and just look at this bit. 5 is less than or equal to 2x minus 3. We can add 3 to both sides of that, and that would give us 8 is less than or equal to 2x. And if we just look at this side here, we can add 3 to both sides of that too, and that would give us 2x is less than uh, 9. And so you can see that we actually added 3 to everything. We added 3 here and here and here. All right. So by the same logic, if we want to get rid of this 2 by dividing by 2, we should just divide all three parts by 2. So that would give us 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than four and a half. And that's the solution. Any x that's in that range will make 2x minus 3, the floor of it, equal to 5. And we can, if we really want to, write it as a set. So x is in the set from 4, including 4, up to 4 and a half, but not including 4 and a half. OK, now for part b. So for part b, we want to solve the floor of x take 5 is equal to the floor of 3 take 2x. Not floor, sorry. The absolute value of x take 5 is equal to the absolute value of 3 take 2x. OK, so how do we do that? Well, we need to know what absolute value means. So let's write that down. Note. The absolute value of just a number, x, is um, the same number but without its minus sign if it has one. So if x is positive, nothing happens, it's just x. If x is negative, then we remove the minus sign and that's the answer. So it's got two different places. What happens when x is negative and what happens when x is positive or zero? So if x is positive, it's just x. And if x is negative, well it is x, but we have to get rid of the minus sign. There's already a minus sign that's part of x, so if we add an extra one, it will cancel out with the minus sign that's already there. Let's just check that. Mod of minus 3 is 3, right? Which is actually minus minus 3. So it does work. OK, that's the definition of what mod is. So if we want to solve something, one way of going about it would be just be to say that if we knew that mod x was 5, we could say that x is plus or minus 5. So we're going to go down that road. But this could be plus or minus x minus 5, and this could be plus or minus 3 minus 2x. So those things all go together in various combinations. So we have that... Um, mod or absolute value of x take 5 is plus or minus x take 5 and the absolute value of 3 minus 2x is plus or minus 3 minus 2x and so we get four options we can have 
we can have um, plus x minus 5 and plus 3 minus 2x. Or we can have plus x minus 5 and um, minus 3 minus 2x. Or we can have minus x minus 5 and minus 3 minus 2x. Ah, oh, but look, that's the same as the one above because I can just divide by the minus 1 and that would get me the same as the one above. So we don't actually need that one. And the last option is to have uh, minus x minus 5 and plus 3 minus 2x. Oh, and that's the same as the one above again. That's the same as the one above again, um, because if I multiply by minus 1, I'll get the one above, so I don't need that one either. Excellent, so that leaves me with two equations to solve. Let's do this one first. So, if I add 2x to both sides, I'll get 3x, and if I add 5 to both sides, I'll get 8. So x is equal to 8 on 3. And if I I'll expand out this bracket, minus 3 plus 2x, Okay, this time it looks most reasonable for me instead of um, subtracting 2x from both sides. Instead of subtracting 2x from both sides, I ought to subtract x from both sides because that will leave me with a positive x, which is a lot easier to deal with. So let's subtract x from both sides, which would give me x, and add 3 to both sides, which would give me minus 2. So let me just check to see if that works. Well, they both definitely satisfy the equations um, because any of those options that we chose uh, would satisfy the original equations. So these are the answers. So therefore, x is equal to 8 on third, 8 thirds and possibly minus 2. And that's the end of the question.